The most important thing to take away is that the setup worst case slack must be positive. If you go to the timing summary, if this number is positive, you're good. If this number is negative, go into your clock path and you look at this setup time and you look at that guy. That's all you're interested in. Hi, I'm Stacy, and welcome back to my video. And today we're going to be talking timing, timing reports, timing analysis, how to interpret them, what do they mean, and I'm going to be going back to my linear feedback shift register project from a couple of weeks ago and we're going to be opening it up and looking at what it looks like synthesized. So I have the implementation done. In order to do that, I just clicked run synthesis and then run implementation. I have my timing constraints all set up from the previous video and now we're going to open the implemented design. In order to see the schematic, we click on schematic. This is the schematic for the source code that I wrote. The way that this code works is that each signal is registered to the next register. So these are registers and then the output of this one goes to the input of this one. So zero drives one. So that is this line of code here. One is driven by zero and then that's this. One is driven by zero and then here two is driven by one and that's this line two is driven by one and then we go three is driven by two and then that's this line three is driven by two. Each signal propagates to the next register. Each signal is also used into this LUT. So the LUT is this comparison here where if linear feedback shift register is greater than 10 then we drive the LED high. This LUT contains a lookup table, a truth table, and I didn't have to work this out. I just put it to my code. The linear feedback shift register must be greater than 10, and it worked out itself what that truth table needed to look like. So I didn't have to do any Boolean algebra. I just had to code it the way I think about it, and then the synthesis tool will do the work for me. And that's really important. You want to write the simplest code as possible and let the synthesis tool do the work. And then bit zero is driven by bit two inclusive or bit three. And so that's this guy here. Bit three output is fed into this LUT and bit two's output is fed into this LUT. And this truth table is an exclusive or truth table. And that result drives into range zero which is this line of code. So we can see the schematic for what our code produced. I will show you now how the timing report relates to the schematic. So we're just gonna go, if you uh, do report timing summary, I've already got it open, but I wanna show you what it looks like. Then we head over to clock paths. There's my sys clock and there's my, so this is a really, really short timing summary because it's a really small design. If I click on a path here, we can see this is a timing path from one register to the next. So a path is defined as the distance between two registers. And this is what the worker is doing. So in my factory video and my analogies video, I talked about how the FPGA is like a factory and every worker has a job. So what the worker does is defined by what's in between these two registers. And this report is telling me how long my worker took to do his job. And this number, which is the slack, is actually how much time he had left. So we can see that we had six nanoseconds left of the clock cycle that we could have used, that was available. So that means that there was enough time and there was time left over, there's six nanoseconds left. If this number is negative, it's a negative slack, and that is he didn't have enough time. That is, he went over the clock cycle and he went over the clock cycle by however much if it's one or two or three it'll be minus one minus two minus three and that means he went over the clock cycle by minus three nanoseconds or whatever that value is and so when you have a negative slack it means there wasn't enough time if you have a positive slack it means he was waiting around right so we could see that in all four of our parts in this design we have a positive slack and that's a good thing. It means that he was waiting, that there was enough time in the clock cycle and there was time left over. And this is the amount of time that was left over in our clock cycle. If we look at this, we can see the fan out. So the fan out is how many ways the signal gets split up. So if you have a signal that's being driven and then it gets distributed to a whole bunch of different things. So it gets used over here and it gets used over there and it gets used over there and it gets split up and duplicated into all different parts. That's the fan out of the signal. So if we look at this one, we can see this one has a fan out of three. 
there is our signal where it's being driven by the output it's being driven by register two and it's getting driven into register three it's getting driven into our output lookup table and it's being driven back into our bit zero lookup table and so it's being driven in three places it's got three different places it's going to so it's fan out is three and when you have really really high fan out that can be inefficient so it's always a number to keep an eye out for the from register is the source register that's driving the signal the to register is the destination of the path and then the total delay is how much time it took and the logic delay is how much time it spent through logic the net delay is how much time it spent through net and the requirement is the clock cycle and so usually the worst case slack is the number that you look at because you care about how much time you have left you don't really care about how long it took you care about how much you have left after you're done and so this is the timing report and this is really helpful if you have a negative slack and you want to see where in your design your negative slack is occurring you can double click on this and it will bring up the path source and destination and it will tell you all of the logic that that signal or that path goes through in order to be able to see if there are specific key areas that are problematic and so if we go over to these hold times the timing checks that the signal is in sync with the clock both before the clock edge and after so before the clock edge is the setup time so that is is the signal ready and stable before the clock edge because we register on the clock edge so the signal needs to be ready before the clock edge but then we also need to make sure that it remains stable after the clock edge it's stable before and it remains stable after the clock edge for a specific amount of time and so the hold time is the time after the clock edge the hold times don't really become problematic it's quite rare to have hold timing issues because the synthesis tool can for the most part work those out the setup time is the time that is the biggest problem so if you don't really have to worry so much about the hold times you just need to worry mostly about the setup times and specifically the worst case slack the most important thing to take away from all of this is that the setup worst case slack must be positive and if you go to the timing summary you can see here my worst case slack is 6.9 my negative slack is none i don't have any negative slack so just from the timing report if this number is positive you're good if this number is negative what you do is you go into your clock paths and you look at this setup time and you look at that guy that's all you're interested in um and that's it and that's timing and that's the timing report it's not so bad a bit of a complicated one this week but i think it's important for us to understand timing and how it works and i appreciate you 